Sarah, good job. You did it. I'm really <laughs> proud of you. Could you tell us the difference between sexualization and sexuality? <laughs> um, sexualization is defined as is being promiscuous, and sexuality is a normal part of being human and a healthy part of becoming an adult. Okay, and how does that fit in with the ideal of beauty? That girls are um, thinking that they're changing instead of, instead of promoting sexuality. In the American culture has become sexualization, has thought of it as sexualization, and so okay. therefore. Thank you. Sarah, congratulations just on your presentation tonight, and congratulations on your acceptance to Dallas Baptist University. Um, my question is, um, you mentioned about social media. Children at a younger age are having access to social media. Do you have any idea as to what ages you're referring to? Um, well, now, Almost anyone can have social media. It says 13 or older usually, but most people lie. And so children as young as six, I guess, as long, I guess. Sure. Yep. Sarah, you look beautiful. Um, you had mentioned um, environmental factors um, contribute to, um, I guess it's the, the development of, of girls at a younger age, is that correct? Was it the BPA you said? Um, how, 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 does, how do the environmental factors, in particular plastic, how is that impacting how girls are seeing themselves as beautiful or not beautiful? Um. So it causes an early puberty, and when girls, so normally they would enter puberty at an 10 or 11 or 12, and they have the ability to emotionally deal with it better, but when it's younger, it's harder for them to deal with it, and so the pressure is harder. Can I follow up with that? Does does our government know that? I mean, is is there anything that we we could do as a society if this is a chemical or an environmental issue? Is there anything that is on the books or are we dialoguing about changing um, this? Well, I think I said it in my confirmatio that they have been banned in many U.S. cities and states along with Canada. So there is. People do know what's happening. It just needs to be known more publicly. And is that recently? Um, in the last 10 years. Last 10 years? About. Thank you. Sarah, it was really impressive, <laughs> your, your speech, and it was a lot of information. Um, one of the things that um, I was thinking about that you brought up was about the clothing that's available to younger girls in the stores. Um, and I'm thinking the parents are the ones that usually buy the clothes for their daughters. And there must be a market for it or the stores wouldn't be putting it on their racks. So, you know, that just makes, makes me very concerned about, you know, the young girls today being brought up with these um, types of clothes that are not appropriate for age, for their age, and maybe not at all <laughs> for a 
a young lady that should feel good about herself just the way she is. And I appreciate your bringing that point out. It made me think a lot about what's on our racks and why we're buying those things. Yeah. So I'm sorry that's not a question. But <laughs> <laughs> You know, Sarah, how um, I see these points, what do you think you could be doing or what would you like to be, to do now that you have researched over this year? What do you see as a way to change this way of thinking? Um, I think what I said about how we can help, we can give children or young girls Tell them what, like inform them, instead of just letting them figure out for themselves. Yes. Sarah, you mentioned about um, empowering our young girls and giving them tools. <coughs> what kind of tools is that when you say giving them tools? What kind of tools are you talking about? Um, letting, so letting maybe let him know what is going to happen in the future with what they're going to face and so they can think about maybe how they're going to how they can deal with it soon. Okay. Okay. Good. Good job, Sarah. Um I know when you first intro you said how you had a difficulty living in China and then coming to the U.S. and finding your standard of beauty and I guess along the lines of Karen's question of encouraging girls of how they could find themselves beautiful and how new examples from how you have done that and then your research of how that's helped you find a, a sense of beauty and value despite all the media and I think that it's how I concluded as it should be in individuals' mind, so not follow what everyone else is doing. Just think of yourself as beautiful, and then you will not have pressures from everyone else. So are you saying that it's, um, as a child growing up, that it's primarily the parent's responsibility um, to help form this image of their daughter? It's, yes, it's the parents, but it also should be the, the child, because they can't rely on their parents' mm. ideas forever. They have to come for their own. You know, um, in the news recently, there's um, a model that has been, you know, put on covers and has, you know, ideas about how she wants to be a model on Vogue and everything. And she's a, a size 22 woman. And um, I'm thinking, uh, I know you mentioned uh, anorexia as, you know, being a problem. And I'm just wondering about the role even of the medical, <laughs> I, I don't know, I've, I've, I don't know that doctors tell their patients if they're too thin or too heavy, just from a medical perspective it seems like um, there would be, that would be appropriate mm. because there are health issues involved too in, in that, but I know your focus was, was really just feeling good about, you know, girls should be feeling good about themselves you know, just not worrying about the looks and the outward um, impression or what other people say about them. But I'm just thinking about the, the medical side of it too. You know, there's, it needs to be addressed. Yeah. <laughs> Have you read about that? The, um, that? I've probably heard about it, but I haven't really researched that much into yeah. it. Sarah, can you tell me a little bit about um, what the standards of beauty were in China 
and then what the, when you came over here, what the standard of beauty is here in America. Can you kind of dif, like juxtapose um, those? Well, it's not all the same, kind of, but we're at the maybe like, well, I think mostly what you think of generalization would be um, really light skin and really thin and what they consider Americans they only see as maybe blonde hair and tall and blue eyes. And then when you come to America, it's they want to be, I don't know, what you think of as being tanned and whatever, you want to fit whatever the current trend is, so it is constantly changing from year to year. Did you study like any of the other countries? I mean, you know those two from personal experience, but are there any standards that are, like did you study different countries of knowing, is there truly, is there a common denominator or a common um, thread of what certain countries might consider um, ideal or beautiful? Um, I did write an OO speech about, I used how one woman photoshopped herself like looking like a certain standard in, in 20 different countries mm -hmm. and they're all completely different so right. you can't really have because every culture is different too so you can't really have the same um, and so she she kind of found a formula for each country to make herself beautiful yeah and anything was there anything that was the same in the cultures? Um, the Middle Eastern were eyes mostly, and then the Europeans were maybe their hair, and then the American culture was the, their faces, shape, their faces. the face, shape of their faces. Wow, interesting. Sarah, how, how does one's relationship with God affect their ideal of beauty? Do you think? Um, well, God created them, so they, he, put, he made them exactly the way that they should be. Very good. Sarah, um, as you head off to college and you end up having a doormate who is very, very different from you, and um, how are you going to um, keep yourself from um, maybe comparing or um, falling into that trap of feeling like she's prettier than me, she's taller than me, you're going to Dallas, so there's going to be people <laughs> different. <laughs> you know, and for myself, I know, I remember too, wanting to be tall and blonde and blue-eyed. I remember that. And, you know, based on this, knowing that you need to change your thinking and that God has created you to be beautiful just as you are, how are you going to um, keep yourself from falling into that trap? Um. Probably from following the quote and saying, if you have a person who has ugly thoughts, will be ugly, get ugly and ugly every day and week and year. So just remember that what you think is how you're going to act. I was wondering, um, in any of the research over the internet and the social media, was there anything that, um, how kids are on younger and younger, that had to do with uh, family structures or situations that might have been a cause to that or seen um, less of that? I don't, um, I don't really know that information, but okay. it's a very good question. <laughs> 
I didn't know if maybe a side research, if you read a paragraph or something. You quoted Leonard Sachs in some of your um, evidence in your um, presentation. How did his research affect your study of beauty? Uh, how was he in, how yeah. he affected it? Yeah, how did, how did he, you know, you read about what Leonard Sachs has researched. How does that affect it when you did your paper? Did it have an impact on it at all? Yeah, I used his book and took the three main factors from it, and that's where based the whole um, argue, uh, body of my paper was okay. from. Okay. Sarah, do you think that um, that these ideals are changing in this this society that we're in now? I mean, um, I think of myself when I was a little girl, and we all pretty much dressed the same. And but it's interesting because I look now and I see there's so many subcultures. You know, you've got people that are all tatted out now. You've got people with different color hair. Um, do you think that ideal is kind of waning and we're creating many different subcultures of beauty. Do you, do you see a trend in that? Yes. Because in the 50s, I mean, everybody looked like um, father knows best wife or whatever. I mean, there was just that ideal of really what a woman looked like or, but I see so many different varieties in this day and age. Do you have any statistics or have you found anything about that in your research? Um, well, I did. Uh, say that because of all the cultures in America, it's why there's not one, there's not a universal standard because every culture or state or any everything will have different standards of what is beautiful. Okay, thank you. So I didn't do any, I don't have statistics left. Yeah, go ahead. So is the United States unique? in its standard of beauty because we have so many different cultures compared to like maybe another country who doesn't have as many integrated cultures as us? Yes. Okay. And, um, I know with the environmental toxins and factors and the BPAs being um, taken out of different food products and things, I know uh, today's health is I've heard said strong as the new skinny, or do you think that is related in some of the, as we become more aware as a culture? Um, I don't know mm -hmm. how to answer that. In your experience, just growing up in China, um, did you see um, bulimia and anorexia being as prevalent as in the United States or more? Um, no, I didn't see it as much as I've seen it or heard about it here in my experience. Sarah, is there, is there a definition to beauty? Do we have, is there actually a definition of beauty? Um, I think, I don't think there is a definition because as there's a quote that says, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so everyone sees beauty as differently through their eyes. So you can't say that yours someone is more beautiful than someone else because someone, everyone could see it differently.
Sarah, you mentioned something about internalizing beauty standards or standards of beauty. What do you mean by that, internalizing? Um, I don't, what did I say? Inter <laughs> you talked about internalizing uh, standards of beauty or beauty standards. You know, when you, want so, it's, it, you said something in the effect of um, internalizing it. Oh, um, so it was the results from the study done about how internet and body were related. Okay. So the effects of the internet were mediated with the internalization of the thin ideal. Oh, okay, so you're talking about young girls internalize yeah. it. That is the, they think that's what it is. Okay, I just wasn't sure what that was, okay. Sarah, I would think that in the United States, actually nationwide, that um, businesses are trying to make money, and so whether it be cosmetics, not just clothing, but um, everything, that they are um, setting the trends, and they are pushing that you are not enough and you need this product. Um, do you think that um, the government should have maybe get involved? Is there something that can be done? National board organizations, you know, that are trying to help control this, um, you know, make a buck uh, mentality type of thing? Um, I don't think the government would become that involved because it's it's not as it's not a great as important as other things, but I think maybe local places could get involved, not and that not make it something national because then it would become there would be more standards. I'll go for it. <laughs> um, do you believe in the world if everybody had good thoughts that we could get rid of these ideals of beauty? Do you think that? Do you think that's a a possible goal or a probable goal? Do you think that that could happen? I think it can be possible, but also the world is um, sinful, and yeah. therefore we can't all have. Um, perfection and but I think if everyone individually starts to think that way it can lead to more positivity. 